so um hi guys so we'll be taking um we're going over linear motion this morning and it's a very important um topic because yeah mostly motion questions are always asked in almost in every uh every exam that actually involve physics so before we start what do you understand by linear motion now let's start with what you understand by motion Motion basically deals with like changing the state of a particular body. When you say a body undergo motion, it means it's there is movement, and since there is movement, there is change in position, and then some of the change in position cannot come with um with the rate at which the change is actually occurring. That's why we have our speed, our velocity, acceleration, and all. Now we have types of motion. We have um, random motion, we have rotational motion, we have uh, rolling motion, we have transitional motion, we have auxiliary motion. Now, random motion is the type of motion in which the body undergo follows an haphazard pathway. Like the direction of the object is not known. Like you can predict it. Like that of gas molecule, that of uh, a bee. A moving b it's just random you can't be you say okay it's going to move towards the right it will my desire to go towards the left it cannot be predicted and then we have the um, rotational motion now, rotational motion is just every other the type of motion which all the other acts of the body moves around a central um, axis now, axis is like a straight line that divides the body into two equal parts, both to the left and right, and both to the front and back. So the object moves around that particular axis, and when all of that aspect of the body moves around that particular axis, it more like follows all of that part of the um, of the body follows circular motion except for the center. So that's rotational motion when all of the aspect of the body is moving around a central axis. An example of that is that of a rolling of a moving fan. An example of that is when you um when you hold when you hold the string when you hold the string and then you start moving it around in a circular pathway. Now in that case because it might for that case it might actually be circular motion but then for it not to be circular motion that means you have to consider the both the the, the full string at length because now you have the center part of the string or let's say that of relation of the head around its axis yeah i think that's more relatable the relation of the head around its axis so that's for rotational motion and for transitional motion transitional motion is a type of motion which a body moves in a straight line like that of a car moving from point A to point B. That's rotational motion. A body moving in a straight line. It's not moving a curve way or whatever. It's just going straight from one point to another. And then we have oscillation motion. Oscillation motion is the type of motion which a body moves to and fro about a main position. Oscillation motion can also be referred to as vibrational motion. But then oscillation motion itself and compass or the vibratory motion, simple motion, I know. So, oscillation motion is what the to and fro movement, to and fro or back and forth movement of an object about a mean position. An example of that is um, is a vibrating body, a vibrating body, and when you eat a solid, when you eat a solid, the, its molecules vibrate about a mean position. So that's also an example of an oscillatory motion. Now, I did mention of rolling motion. Now, rolling motion combines both transitional motion and rotational motion together. In such that, let's say you have um, a barrel, a barrel, you are rolling the barrel. Now you notice that the axis of, of what am I saying? not the axis, the the um, circumference of that barrel will be moving in this in a rotational motion. It's moving round. It's moving round, round, 
while the center of the barrel will be changing its location from one point A to point B, then you are rolling that barrel of ball down a part. Notice that all other as the all other aspect of the of the barrel will be undergoing rotational motion, it's moving around, while the center of the barrel itself will be changing its location from one point to another. You can try it. Just remove the cover of your pen and try and roll it on your table. You notice that the boy, the the all other aspect of the of the pen is rolling. Is sorry, is rotation. Why the center? If you observe the center, it is moving from one point to another. From the point of view starting the rotation, or we starting the rolling to the point where the pen stops rolling. So that's rotational motion. So the my problem not to confuse you. I say okay, rolling motion is so so so. Rolling motion is both combination of what rotational motion and and um translational motion now moving on now so we'll be focusing primarily on linear motion and linear motion um is a form of motion take note it's not a type of motion i just listed the types of motion that we have just now now type is different from forms now forms of motion are like linear motion circular motion while types of motion are random um a puzzle, um, a puzzle. we have random you have um, rotational you have transitional you have auxiliary you have rolling motion those are the types of motion but then linear motion circular motion projectile motions are all forms of motion they are all forms of motion okay um now to start with to, to start with linear motion there are some terms you need to understand because now going through this now you notice that you are seeing something like velocity you are seeing something like displacement you are seeing something like time you are seeing something like instantaneous velocity you are seeing something like equation of motion you are seeing something like svat so let's help us define all those terms one by one so we start with distance now distance is the difference between two points is the difference in length between two points so let's say you are standing on at a point a and another person is standing at point b now the difference in length between your where you are standing and where the other person is standing is your distance now what's time time is is um is a parameter that used to distinguish between what two events so let's say and this all these things will be used for when a body is moving at a particular rate like is let's say um the rate of movement of a, of a body basically that's when you tend to use like time and then we have our displacement the displacement is the distance covered in a specified direction so unlike before when we talk about the difference in length between the point that you are standing and the other person is standing for displacement you have to write the direction so probably the person is located not to where you are standing so you actually have then you are going to like measure the distance which is let's say like it's five meter and then it will be five meter not that what is the direction and what the reason to use the representation direction is like north south east west and it's possible to learn to combine north east south west south north south north okay. south north scale south east south west um North east, north west, and then you always tend to like use um, degrees also, like 30 degrees south of west, 30 degrees north east. So, those are the ways they represent the, they used to, these are the, the ways they represent directions. Now, to speed, speed is the rate of change of is the distance cover per unit time or rate of change of distance. What that means is when the person is moving is covering a certain distance let's say the person is running the person is covering that particular distance is at a certain amount of time now that time and the distance covered when you divide the distance covered by the time you're going to get a value now that value is your speed notice that for this for this also we are not considering the direction at all so that's your speed speed is what is the rate of change of distance or rate or the distance covered per unit time 
Now under under distance under your speed, you have different forms of speed. I won't go into that yet. I will patiently wait to talk about when I'm done talking about velocity and acceleration, and I'll be able to relate it together because the boats have almost the same. They have some things in common. Okay, now moving on. Velocity. What is velocity? Velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Now, don't forget that I said that distance is just what difference in length between two points. Velocity. Uh, displacement is what change in distance in the specified direction. Now, we just said now that velocity is what rate of change of displacement. So that means if the displacement, that means the distance with the direction is the one that you'll be using. So you have distance. So you have um, displacement, change displacement over time to be your what? To be your vel to be your velocity. Velocity is the what? The rate of change of what of displacement. It's just like speed also, just like maybe it has what direction. And the way you do the calculation for velocity is a little bit different because now you're dealing with direction, and direction only seems to have an impact on the magnitude. In the case of velocity, in the case of displacement. Now let's now go to acceleration. What's acceleration? Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Okay. So what I'm what that means is now you have velocity with which the body is already moving. Now it's possible for the object, for the body to change that particular velocity along the line. What I mean by this is, what I mean by this is, let's say maybe the body, let's say maybe, like, let me, for example, a car. A car cannot move with the same velocity all throughout the entire journey. It definitely obviously have like, it will definitely have like, change it at one point. Another probably when it's when like, like a trailer in front of it, it has like what reduce the speed is velocity. Now all this change in velocity is the one that results to what acceleration. Remember that is the direction of acceleration is what rate of change of what of velocity. Okay. So now I would like to re represent them with something, and that will be for your speed. So you can replace speed with what with v as well. V equals to what distance over time. Now for your velocity, velocity is always what v this equals displacement change the displacement over time. Don't forget, don't now consider the um the dash on top of it. Now that dash on top of it is is just represents the direction. Don't remember for speed, I didn't add any dash on top of it. There was not like a line on top of it. That shows that that is what a scalar quantity does not have direction. Why, when you add the dash on top of it, it's used to represent the um, the direction basically. Why for your acceleration? Acceleration is what v minus u. Now, the initial v, this v here is final velocity the u here is initial velocity everything divided by what by your time change in time so these are the formulas that you, you that you use to calculate and uh, your velocity your sp speed and indoor acceleration okay i think we're done with that so now let's go further to specify um, um, in linear motion, and then I forgot to mention I told you before that we, there are some things I will mention like average velocity, average, um, average instantaneous, and the rest, and uniform. Now, for speed, for velocity, for acceleration, the terms we call all of them tend to have instantaneous form, the other tend to have average form. This, all these tend to have um, uniform form or non-uniform form. Now, for instantaneous, instantaneous speed, velocity, or acceleration means 
that particular speed velocity or acceleration at that particular point in time. Now, for something like for something like velocity, it can change at any point. Now, if velocity changes at any point, that's what leads to acceleration or deceleration. So it's possible for it to change at every point. So now, for you to know whether it's changing, you have to be able to know what the speed or the velocity at a particular point in time, at a particular point in time, and then at another point in time. So you be able to like compare the two of them together to know, okay, yeah, this thing is accelerating or is not accelerating. So that's what it means. And um, so that is basically what it means for most speed. And then for your average, average is just like um, the, the mean, like the mean of all the speed with which the body moves, or the mean of all the velocity with which the body moves, or the mean of all the acceleration with which the body moves, which the body covers a particular distance. So that's what average means. And the uniform, uniform means that the that particular stuff, whether speed, velocity, or acceleration remains constant all throughout the journey. Why non uniform? It means that it's what it changes. Now, for your non uniform velocity, for non uniform, for uniform velocity, it does not lead to acceleration because if the velocity is, remains the same, and we are saying that acceleration is what the rate of change of velocity, that means there's no change in velocity. So that means there cannot be acceleration. There can only be acceleration when there is change in velocity. Now, change in velocity can be positive or negative. It doesn't matter. So whether there is a change, there will always be words acceleration. So, so with that said, I would like to like draw some graphs just to represent the um just to represent just to just to represent I think I have seen uh, a couple of graphs in um in the UTME questions. Okay, we have this. Now let's let's start with that of um now there are some graphs that we have like speed uh, like distance time graph, displacement time graph, speed time graph, velocity time graph, acceleration time graph. Now let's start with that of um distance time graph. Now we represent distance with S and we represent this side with C time with C. Now if you have a graph like this, take note that for a speed for a displacement so what am I saying? For a distance time graph, now there are three there are like two things that you should take note of there. You have the slope, you know in the graph, that's some very important thing you should take note of. You have the slope and then you have the then the area. Now the slope is like the the y over the x. That means what you have change in s over change in t. Now, out of all the formulas I've given you so far, what does this really correlate with? That's what change in distance over time. That it it correlates with what speed. So that means the slope of a distance time graph is what is the speed. The slope of a distance time graph is what is the speed. Speed. Now the area is what that means your area will be what s times t. Does s times t represent anything? That means distance times time. Does it represent anything? No, it does not. So that means the area does not amount to anything. So that means the area is what zero. While the slope of a distance time graph is what is the speed. Okay, good. Now for now for this phase graph, for this, you notice that the distance remains the same. Let's say, I, I, I mean, on that line now, there was 5 meter there. The 5 meter remains the same. That means the body remained at 5, at the point 5 meter. 
throughout the journey. So that means the body did not move, right? Now, if we have to calculate the slope now, slope is what changing the distance over time. And the distance is not changing. So that means your change distance will be what? 5 minus 5, which is 0 all over the time, which might be like 5 seconds, 2 seconds, or whatever. The 0 divided by, is, zero divided by anything is what? Is 0. So that means for this kind of graph, for this kind of graph, like for this kind of distance time graph, the speed, the, um, the slope is what is zero. So that means the body has zero speed and the body is stationary. Take note, the body is stationary. Okay, now for Now for this second one, it's showing like a straight line passing through what? Pi passing through the origin zero. Now for this for this, you see that if you if you actually um calibrate or we actually like grade this graph, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight meter for the time to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seconds. You see that as the distance is increasing, so is the time. Like they are more like Increasing in equal proportion. Now that shows that okay, um, at time t, at time t equals to one, probably the distance is two meter. At time t equals to three, equals to two, probably the time is, probably the distance is four meter. You use that it's not like constant increase like that. So if you have to calculate the distance, the speed, the slope of this graph, you are going to get a value. That would be 2 over 1. Versus what change in y over change in x. Now, uh, y is the distance. The one on the x on the y axis. That's the distance. That's like 4 minus 2 all over for the um time. All over the time which is change in time, which is uh, 2 minus 1. So that's what 2 over 1. So that means what well, your slope will be, what, will be 2. Now that 2 is what is your speed. So it will be what, 2 meters per second. Okay, so that shows that it was it is constant or true. Like even 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 now compare that of the point of zero zero seconds to one seconds, you will get what the distance over all the time is also what two all over what all over one. You are still going to get what your two. So that means it's all what the main constant or true. So if you have this kind of graph or distance time graph, the slope the speed is what is constant, and the body is not stationary. The speed is constant. But then the body is not stationary. Why, if you have for this last one, for this last one, the body, the speed is changing. It can either be increasing or decreasing. But then the speed is basically changing. It's not uniform. But then the body still has speed. That means the speed is changing. The body for the speed to change, that means the body has speed in the first instance. So the speed is changing and the body has speed. Okay. So that's for distance time graph now for velocity time graph so we have this almost the same thing now what we now be having is displacement I think we're dealing with driven time graph Replacement time graph. Okay. Now for this first one, um, that means this is almost like. Let me put it to you this way. Every single thing that you have on a distance time graph, you also have it on what on your displacement time graph. Just that your slope is different. The area of your of displacement time graph is also what is also zero because displacement time time will give you what will give you nothing. But then your slope is what change in displacement over time, and change displacement over time is what is your speed. So what am I saying? It's not your speed; it's your velocity. Change displacement over time is your velocity because the slope of this graph now is what change in displacement over change in time, and that's what is the formula for calculating what your velocity. Do you get? So your slope 
is what your is velocity your slope of achievement time graph is what is velocity while your area is what is nothing so that's the only difference between this velocity time graph the um displacement time graph and distance time graph all the that thing is the same like for example now for this first graph now the body is also stationary because that means there's no change in um in distance or direction for this one too the body the, the velocity is what is constant for this one also the velocity is what is changing for this one the velocity is constant the velocity is uniform so it's almost like the same thing as that of your of your distance time graph. Just that what there's difference in um there's difference in just the um the quantities that you'll be getting. Like instead of getting speed, you'll be getting velocity in this case. I hope you understand. Okay. Moving on. Let's do the same thing for um Then you have this. So now let's start with let's, let's start with speed. So I think for momentum, when you're dealing with um, momentum, you always tend to have to deal with this with the speed time graph. Although speed time graph does not really have a lot of significance, but then the always tend to like hacks. The always tend to like you have to, if you understand this graph, you like relate it with that of well you understand um what's it called momentum better so you have your speed oh sorry that should not be speed it should be v just v c v c v c now for your speed time graph, for your speed time graph we have um we have the slope you have your uh, area so your slope will be what v over change in view over time your change in view over time will give you what like what am i saying that will be changing okay change in view over time will give you what speed over time will give you what it will give you nothing don't mix don't mix it up with your um Acceleration. This is speed. The calculation is what change the velocity over time, not change in speed over time. So your slope for a speed time graph is what is zero. Why your area is what speed times time. Now speed times time will give you what. Think about it. Speed times time will give you what. Your total distance covered. So that means your area for a speed time graph. The area for a speed time graph is what is the total distance covered why your slope is what is zero now let's now go to the interpretation of the graphs now for this first graph the body is not stationary the body has a what a uniform speed the speed is constant it has a uniform speed the speed is constant so the body is not stationary because for it to even possess a speed a constant speed which is like five meter per second that means the body is obviously moving, so the body is not stationary. Don't go and mix it up with that of distance or displacement time graph. Moving on. Now for this second, for this second part, the speed is what is not uniform. The speed is what is changing. The speed is increasing, but then the increase in the speed is what is one that is constant. Don't mix it up. The speed itself is not constant. It is increasing. But then the change in speed is the one that is constant. Why for this last part, both the change in speed or the speed mm -hmm. or anything, everything is not constant. The change in speed is not constant. The speed itself is not constant. Everything about it is what is not constant. Now let's move to what to velocity time graph.